uh, we're going to allow questions again, or encourage questions again, at the microphone. As we get ready for that, I just want to mention, uh, I hope you agree that the quality of these presentations deserve a wide audience. Have we got any questions? Um, I want to echo off um, basically your, your Ron's last point. Let's say we are, let's hopefully we are all successful. We defeat socialized medicine coming up. My question to you guys is, and maybe this is more appropriate for the last panel, but we're successful. We beat socialized medicine. Should we, what can, we, what can be done? I mean, this debate has been going on since 1961. You can go on the internet and find a video of Ronald, um, an audio tape of Ronald Reagan talking about the dangers of socialized medicine. Should, should we go for a constitutional amendment? I mean, to make the bar, the bar so high that our political class never dares try this again. I don't, I mean, I am tired of going through this debate since 1994 and having to refight this. What do you guys think? I, I, look, this is not a problem with our politicians. Our politicians are certainly at fault here, but our politicians, I mean, we get the politicians we deserve. I mean, we have to live with that. We vote them in. Uh, some of us don't run because we don't want to or because we think it's, uh, you know, it's a hassle. Uh, it, you know, voters vote these people in. They're not just randomly picked out of nowhere. Uh, we get the politicians we deserve. What needs to happen in this country is, a, is an educational effort that exactly what we've done here today that explains what socialism means, what it means for individual American lives, what it means in terms of their ability to thrive and prosper and then offer Americans an alternative, offer Americans both practically an alternative and philosophically, ethically an alternative. And I think Americans are open to this. This is a country, I'm a, you know, I'm a, re I'm a refugee from socialism, if you will. I, I, I was uh, born and raised in Israel. My, my father was a physician in Israel, uh, was, I say, because socialized medicine forced him to retire at the age of 65. He was a brilliant uh, internist who couldn't work anymore. Because, uh, because the bureaucrats have decided 65, you have to, you have to quit. Uh, I know what socialized medicine is like on a very first-handed basis. Uh, you know, but we, we need to explain all that, but then what's unique about this country is that the American people intuitively, they don't have the words for it, they don't have the ideas for it, but intuitively reject that idea. They truly still believe that they have a right to pursue their own happiness. They can't explain it, they don't really understand it, they, they don't understand what rights truly mean. We need, it's a massive educational effort. There is no quick solutions, uh, constitutional amendments, because they won't pass. Because, uh, you know, unless you educate people, you know, again, if you, put, if you put this healthcare bill to vote, it would probably fail right now on the American people. But six months ago, it might have passed. So it's just educate, 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 and the deeper the education is, the more philosophical education is, the, more, the better the long-term right. result will be. I agree with you. Absolutely. We, do. Uh, um, uh, 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 we can't look for instant solutions. That's what socialists do. They, if, they, if they want one program, one big solution like that, it doesn't work that way. Um, uh, on your aunt's point about, uh, about Medicare, the fact is, the reality is right now that we have 40 million elderly people that we have made a contract with to provide them with health care. They, they have built their retirement around that contract. We can't take it away from them. Uh, um, but but we can change everything going forward so, so that in the future people will not have that dependency. And we can give the people that are there an opportunity to find, find another way of doing it. But, but um, uh, it's going to take, it took us a long time to get into this mess. It's going to take us quite a while to get out too. Yeah, I mean, I agree completely about Medicare. I wasn't suggesting we eliminate it tomorrow. Right. This, this, any, any plan to unwind the kind of statist economy we have today is going to have to go many years, and it's going to have to be done gradually. And commitments made, whether it's Social Security, or Medicaid, have to be lived up to. It's just a matter of somebody entering the system at 20 can be told now, "You will not get Medicare. We're also not going to tax you for Medicare. You know, and, and you know, start planning. Start. You won't get Social Security. Either. Start saving. Uh, that's how you you have to do this gradually." I agree. Thank you for your. Hi, I'm back again. Um, I, uh, Iran, I enjoyed your point about, um, you know, you've talked about Medicare as a third rail, 
and you know, you know, you can't touch it. If you touch it, you you die, right? And I mean, and you link that to the philosophy of need that um, is sort of governing cur currently. But I also think that the other reason is, you know, the numbers, right? There are a great deal of old people, and those people are voters. And so, I think I agree with you, of course, that there is the educational campaign that must occur. And imagine if if 49% of America agreed with the people in this room. I mean, that would be a wonderful accomplishment, right? But the 51%, the majority, could still do what they wanted as long as um, individual rights are not protected some way legally. And it seems that obviously there shouldn't be like a quick fix, you know, like, but because that doesn't matter. But I mean, even, but there has to be some sort of, uh, you know, constitutional, re, re, you know, rediscovering the Constitution or rethinking it in some way in order to make sure that even if 49% of people think, you know, think like people here do, that the 51% can't do what they want anyways. Well, I think if we, fo I think if we followed the Constitution we have today, uh, uh, we'd be fine. So, so part of that education has got to be to respect and, and restore the existing Constitution. Yeah, I agree completely with that. And let me just add, with regard to the, the third rail, if it was explained that Greg just said, look, you X number of million of people, we've got a contract with you, you're going to get it, but it's going to be phased out for younger people. There are more young people in America than there are. And the fact is that those young people would get a much, much better deal. Because if you look at the return on the money, just, just a pure return on the money that they would be investing into the system, and the kind of free health care system that would be created, the kind of innovation, they would live much longer, much healthier, much more prosperous. So if it's explained right, the problem is that nobody tries. They just say, no, no, Medicare we're not going to touch. Uh, and they're losing a wonderful opportunity. Look, uh, the people who suffer the most from socialism, anything, are actually the poor. The poor and competent, the poor and ambitious. The, the Carnegies and the, and the Rockefellers who started out with nothing in the 19th century. The, 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 kind of, the kind of poor who go up and become doctors and become, you know, and go to school and, and become successful. They're the ones who suffer the most. And the people who suffer the most today from these health care bills are not going to be us. The, the younger you are, the more you're going to suffer. The more years you'll have to live under socialized medicine. The, you know, the, the fewer advances, they would be relative to what freedom would be. So let's appeal to the young, to the poor, to the people who most have to benefit from, cap from capitalism. The, 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 the huge misunderstanding out there is that the rich are the biggest beneficiaries of capitalism. That's simply not true. The poor and the middle class benefit from capitalism much more than the rich do. And the, the, the hidden uh, cost of health care to workers is enormous. There was a great article in the Atlantic Monthly, I think David Brooks referred to in his column, He's a little squishy, but the article's great. Uh, I think it was called uh, uh, How American Medicine Killed My Father. And one of the, the statistics, uh, Gold, who relates in this article, is that employers over the lifetime of their employee will contribute close to $2 million for health care for the cost of their employees per person. So when someone says, well, gee, where would I get the money to buy health care? All of that money that's, that would, would go to your salary is going instead to the insurance company. So liberating that money and making everyone aware of exactly how much is being paid on their behalf without their say-so for a plan that they didn't choose, that they will lose if they ever change jobs, is, is part of the education that has to happen so that people just are aware of how much the current system is costing them. Thank you. I would like to encourage everyone to go to and send everyone you know who's a rational person to the websites of the Ayn Rand Center for Individual Rights, the Manhattan Institute, Consumers for Healthcare Choices, and the Heartland Institute, the Institute for Health Freedom, John Lewis's Classical Ideals website, and Americans for Free Choice in Medicine, and to help us all to thunder in the ears of the fathers of the Senate to protect our healthcare freedom. Thank you.